Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.9, an Eagle Dynamics FA-18C Hornet module. Welcome to tutorial 4, air-to-air -air missiles with radar queuing. Today we're going to take the information we gleaned from the previous tutorial, number 3, on the BVR air-to-air -air radar modes, and we're going to apply it to actually launching some missiles. Today I've got pretty much the entire range of modern air-to-air -air missiles that the Hornet can carry. Uh, you can see on the pylon stations, sorry, on the fuselage stations there, uh, I have uh, AIM-7M Sparrows. Uh, on the outer wing stations I have double rack launchers for the AIM-120C-5. And on the wingtips I've got the AIM-9X. So we're basically representing the entire range of FOX-1, FOX-2 and FOX-3 modern missiles that the Hornet can carry. So let's uh, jump into the uh, into the office, as always, and get ourselves set up. I'm first going to make a, an AMRAM launch uh, against the same targets that we had in the previous uh, mission file, actually. So we're going to push our weapon select switch to the right, and we can see confirmed up here on the HUD that we've got uh, AC4, so that's uh, AMRAM C model 4 of. Uh, so we've got four of those missiles available to fire. And we're in visual mode right now. In visual mode, that basically means we don't have a lock. Uh, we could actually place a visual target within this dashed circle and pull the trigger, and we'd fire uh, a mad dog AMRAM. It would basically just come off the rail without a lock, and the first thing that its onboard radar picked up, it would track and destroy. Now, we don't want to do that today. Uh, we want to actually engage some targets that I've got up ahead. So um, I'm going to... Oh, actually, the other thing, of course, pushing to the right did was it put me into air-to-air -air master mode. It put my radar into range while scan, and it brought up the SMS page on the left-hand side here. So uh, I'm going to pop my uh, PRF into medium, because I know that these aircraft are moving away from me. I'm going to go into full afterburner, because I know that they're traveling at a decent speed. And I'm going to angle my radar slightly down, because I know that they're at a lower uh, altitude than I am. And that should help me to pick them up. So let's give that a go. And once we get that lock, uh, I will show you all the symbology that you get at that stage before actually firing. And we'll also go over the, uh, the lock and shoot light that we have up here on the top right. It's a, a nice uh, bit of added uh, situational awareness about what state you're in. So, it might take a moment or two just to get these uh, <laughs> these guys in range. Uh, you've also, by the way, when you've got the AMRAM select, you've got uh, settings for size, RCS, and S mode. Uh, I'm not aware of these actually being implemented as yet. So, looks like we don't have them just yet. I think they're at around about 30 nautical miles just now, uh, but because of their... Um, Oh, there we go. Actually, popping us into interleaved has allowed me to uh, display some of the targets, but these are not the ones we want to engage, actually. We should be getting something a bit further uh, towards us. We'll give it just another few moments to pick up those targets. Actually, I'm just going to focus down just now. I'll actually hide my pilot body and hide the stick, uh, but I'm going to focus down on the right MFD just now so we can see exactly what is going on. So it shouldn't be too much longer. Try this back on medium. I would have thought medium would give me a better chance of picking these guys up. And I'm going to reduce my azimuth scan just now, because I know they're around about this azimuth from me. These two further away are actually friendlies, so we're not interested in them. Well, back into interleaved. Seem to be having a hard time picking these guys up. That can sometimes be the case. It, you know, it depends on things like the aspect, uh, your rate of closure, um, all kinds of stuff. There we go. I've picked them up. 
So I'm going to make this guy my LNS target, and you can see, as before, it's given me the ASE, which is uh, ex acceptable steering error. It's given me the launch uh, acceptable range indications here for uh, maximum, um, the uh, no escape, and the minimum, and we've got the steering dot. We want to get the steering dot into the ASE before we make the launch. So I'm just going to bring myself up to the HUD now, and you'll see that a lot of this information is repeated. I actually just lost the lock. Let's uh, regain that lock there. Oop, there we go. Okay, I'm going to pause for just a moment, oops, so that we can go over all of the symbology. Also note that um, this guy gave a, an enemy IFF response, so is now coded in red. Uh, and on the HUD, the target designator, the TD box, in this case, is a diamond. If you see a square, that means that they're unknown or friendly. Friendlies will also have the text friendly written underneath them. So uh, we've got a bunch more information now. We've got the ASE, the acceptable steering error. Before we launch the missile, we want to press the steer uh, press, <laughs> put the steering dot inside the ASE. Running around the inside of this circle, we have the current range to the target, and it's repeated here. So we're 18.4 miles, that puts us about here. The first triangle that we get uh, is the R max, the absolute maximum range of the missile. Next triangle is RNE, which is no escape zone. If we fire inside this, even if the fighter Sorry, even if the aircraft um, carries out kind of fairly standard maneuvers, they shouldn't be able to defeat the missile. And then we have the minimum range at which we can launch. We have a line and an arrow, which is telling us the target's kind of relative aspect, so that the target is currently flying away from us and to the right a little bit. Uh, and we've got our closure rate here, 360 knots closure. This is a radar target. And then we have time to active. If we were actually able to launch the missile right now, which we're not because we're too far away, it would fly 19 seconds and then it would activate its onboard radar. And then we'd get a TTG, which is time to go, and that'd be the time until impact. Let's uh, unpause. I'm going to correct my steering to the right a little bit, and we're going to continue inbound, and hopefully we'll have this aircraft in range soon. So because this is a this is a rear aspect shot I'm going to be making, there's really no chance of us getting a really particularly long range launch against this target. Uh, like if it's head to head uh, with big altitude differences and high launch speed, you can push this out a lot further. We're going to be pretty close by the time we manage to make this shot. Also note my lock shoot light currently says lock, just confirming that I do have a target locked. Oh, actually, something to note as well. Uh, on the bottom half of the store's management system, you're going to get a whole load of very detailed information about your missile. It's even confirming to me that R max right now would be at 10 miles, RNE 9.5, minimum 0.4. Uh, but yeah, you get things like your, your range, closure rate, target velocity, uh, all sorts of stuff. Just pretty handy. So we're getting pretty close to being in range. I'm going to deactivate my autopilot, and I'm going to place the steering dot into the ASE, ready to take that shot. That's looking pretty good. Okay, it's inside our max. It now says shoot. I've got shoot and a flashing light up here. Once I'm in RNE, shoot will flash. I'm going to pull the gun trigger, that launches the AMRAM. It immediately went active because we were close enough, so I've now got a time to go. I'm just going to pause the simulation right there. And if I look down at the radar display just now, you'll notice that I now have... Well, it confirms the shoot cue down here, by the way. But the other thing to note is that I've got uh, a triangle representing my missile. Keep in mind that we are down here at the bottom line, and this is our direction of travel. Traveling along this line, we will have this triangle, which is representing the missile. There's an A, you probably can't see it. Let's actually unpause and pause again. The letter A confirms that the missile is now active and no longer using our lock. We could actually break lock if we want to. Uh, and we've also got the time to active for the next missile if we were to launch it. We also have the... Um, this is the probability of kill, or probability of impact, number. It's a number between 1 and 18, so it's currently telling us that if I was to launch a missile now, the probability of kill would be basically 100%. Like, I, I will make the hit, uh, in all likelihood. So let's unpause, and let's continue to observe this. 
uh, we should see yeah, 8 seconds, 7 seconds, we should see that the triangle will coincide with our target at around about the time given on the HUD. And hopefully this will be a splash. Oh, that was a splash. I actually hit early. There we go. So even before the estimated impact of the triangle, we hit that target, he's dead. And now we have Lost flashing up on the screen, letting us know that we've lost lock uh, and it's working in memory mode. This is now actually just a simulated target. So anyway, let's uh, hit undesignate and we're back to normal. So that was the entire employment of a, a, an AMRAM missile using the radar queuing. Up next, let's try the same thing, but with the Sparrow. Okay, we're back in the office again. This time I'm gonna push my weapon select to the left. That's gonna give us the 7M uh, and it's telling us that we have two of those missiles. Um, I can actually tap my cage uncage switch to control whether or not I want to loft the missile or whether I want to do a straight shot. That's also controllable by mode on the SMS page where I've got normal, helicopter, or loft. I'm going to leave it in normal for this launch. And uh, once again, we've got the radar on the right-hand side here. Now, of course, something to note is that for the uh, Sparrow, we need to be in single target track. Um, and actually, the radar will stop us from making any mistakes in this regard. Let me, I'm actually going to pop this into TWS, and uh, we're going to angle the radar down a bit. There we go. There's our targets. I'm going to hit nose wheel steering to give me the very first one as an L and S target. But note that I have not actually done a single target track. And you'll see, it actually, it kind of confirms this to me. I've got my lock light on, by the way. Uh, it kind of confirms this to me. I've got a box here, and it says, Go STT. So it's kind of warning me that uh, I don't have a single target track right now. And uh, in fact, the, the system is not capable of employing this missile in the mode that I've got the radar right now. I'm going to demonstrate the automatic switch, though. You know, I, I, I could, of course, just move my cursor over this target and STT it. But just for a bit of fun... Let's, uh, let's intentionally let the system do it all for us. Uh, I'm going to come out of autopilot, I'm going to go full burner, and I'm going to angle myself down towards my target, and let's get it in range. You can see the Sparrow is a shorter range missile than the AMRAAM. The other thing to, the no to note here is that this is a, this is a FOX-1. This is a semi-active semi radar homing missile. It requires my aircraft radar to remain locked on the target for the entire flight of the missile. Uh, so if I lose lock at any time, uh, the missile track is lost. So that does, of course, require me to be an STT. Right, let's continue inbound. And we'll, once we are an STT, we'll get all of the same information that we had with the AMRAAM, on the bottom half of the store's management system. You can see our closure is not that high. This guy's running. <laughs> he knows I'm here. He doesn't want me to attack him. All of the other symbology is the same, basically, in this mode. Except when I go to STT, it's going to give me a time to go. Uh, not an active time, because, of course, there is no active sensor in this missile. Okay, range is starting to come down a little bit. I'm going to make a maximum range shot with this first Sparrow, and if I have to, I can follow up with a second, because I'm carrying two of them today. I'm going to drop my radar screen range down a little bit. We're starting to approach maximum range. He really is running. Uh, <laughs> I'm closing on him, but not that fast. He really is trying his best to run away from me. Radar confirms he's at Mach 0.8. Oh, there we go. We're inside maximum range. In LAR, I'm going to pull the trigger. Missile launch. I'm in STT automatically. 
and missiles guiding. Getting a good track. Missiles guiding quite well. Oh, and that's a miss. That's a miss. Okay, going to get the steering dot in the circle. Pull the trigger again. There's another sparrow. And that one was a kill. There you go. Okay, and target lost. So that is how you employ a sparrow. I had a funny feeling I would need both. <laughs> okay, just a moment, I'm going to get reset, and I'm going to show you exactly the same, but with the Sidewinder this time. Okay, we're back in the cockpit again. This time I'm going to pull Weapon Select to the aft, and immediately I've got the AIM-9X. Uh, infrared cooling into normal. And uh, let's actually put this into Track While Scan. Let's angle my radar down a bit. And there we go. I'm going to hit Nose Wheel Steering. I've got my first target, and I'm going to come out of autopilot. I'm going to accelerate and bring myself down here. Now, keep in mind that the Sidewinder does not need a radar lock during the course of its flight, so all we have to do is get in range and pull the trigger. So because of that, I'm going to leave my radar in TWS. I'm going to fire this missile, hit nose wheel steering, and then fire a second missile at a second target and see if I can actually score two hits here. I'll do that when I'm in the RNE for the Sidewinder, which is going to be considerably closer than this. Oh, and let's put my uh, elevation into automatic here. That was me tapping the cage on cage button, because my Sidewinder was no longer tracking the correct target. It moved on to one of its wingmen. In LAR, pulling the trigger, I'm going to hit nose wheel steering. I've got another guy here, wrong one, and in LAR, fire. Okay, so that's two sidewinders off. That's one shot. Yeah, that's one kill. And this one, is this one going to hit? Am I going to get lucky? I think, in fact, this guy got lucky. I'm, oh, no, no, he didn't. Splash. So there you go. Two sidewinders, two splashes. And that was me making use of the TWS feature of being able to tap nose wheel steering to cycle through targets in order of priority. Very effective there. Nice. Cool. Okie okay, dokie. Okay. So that was the basics of how you employ the AMRAM, the Sparrow, and the Sidewinder. I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you all next time.